So with the fish in cycle on the 75 gallon tank with two baby Oscars in it, having a little bit of trouble with nitrite and nitrate. Can't seem to get those levels down. I've done some big water changes, definitely producing nitrite and nitrate, which means I have both sets of beneficial bacteria in my filter, but my filter is not able to handle the bio load that it's being hit with, which it should be able to, which means a couple of things. Either one, we have some particulate that is breaking down in the mechanical side of the filtration in our canister filter and or we do not have enough biological media. So tonight I'm going to do a couple of things. One, I'm going to do another big water change. We'll drop the water level down, put in some fresh water, dilute the pollutants in there, right? The solution to pollution is dilution. We are also going to take out our tray that has our mechanical filtration in it, or excuse me, clean, yeah, yeah, we're gonna take out our tray that has our mechanical filtration in it as well. We're gonna clean it, make sure there's no particulate breaking down in the front of it that is spiking that ammonia, which the, the beneficial bacteria is able to chew up, but then producing nitrite and nitrate in such a way that the, the beneficial bacteria can't keep up. But we're also gonna pull out our chemical filtration, our carbon filter, as it's time to replace that. Only, I'm not a big fan of those, and I only have it in there because it came with the filter, and I'm going to make that a second tray of biological media. I have some bioceramic rings here, much like what came with the filter itself, and we're going to end up with two trays of biological media, and I think what I'm going to do is take the tray that is already in there and has bacteria on it, and I'm going to put half of it into the other tray and then I'm going to top off each tray with the new. Since we're doing a water change, we have tank water that is non-chlorinated that we can rinse this with. And so once all said and done and we have our trays done, we'll go ahead and rinse those trays in our buckets of tank water we removed. And we're gonna go from there, uh, hopefully doubling our biological filter media should in shorter time with the way we're doing it kind of jump start the rest of the cycle and finish it off in such a level that it's stable as two baby fish even though they're messy baby fish these two baby fish should not be able to outrun this filter it just shouldn't be plausible and hopefully with also checking our filter media our mechanical media we should be able to remove some particulate in there and also improve what our actual bio load on the filter is. So let's start sucking some water out and also cleaning the substrate at the same time. They're Oscars, they make a mess, let's go. Here, even as the water level drops, because of the way this canister filter functions and our inlet is all the way down at the bottom on the opposing side, oh, timer just went off, uh, we can leave the filter running as we do regular water changes. And I do love that about this setup. I don't unplug anything. Even my horizontal heater here, my water change never drops to that level. I have it at, you know, give or take a 40 percent mark, usually 40 to 50 percent is all the water change I have to do. If I'm getting down to 50 percent, I can always scoot that filter down, or that, excuse me, scoot that heater down, and it's not a terribly big deal, but today um, we're going to actually shut off this filter and gain access to the inside of it. This is one of the downsides of a canister filter is even though it's more cleanable than, say, an under gravel filter, although I'd say you can clean an under gravel filter pretty well with a good siphon if you have a nice big one. Um, we're going to attempt to gain access to this guy here, so we're going to have to shut it off. The first thing I'm going to do is allow air to enter this suction line here from the tank. With this, with the pump running, we're going to run it dry for a half a second. We're going to try to get as much water out as possible. Okay. Now with the pump killed, we have to get the water 
out of this line that still remains there. There is some. And we're gonna open this canister filter into an empty bucket, I figure, is probably the best way all the way down here to do it. I don't wanna carry it elsewhere, obviously. That doesn't sound like a party. So if you haven't figured it out yet, this video is definitely on the, well, wing it end of the spectrum. And this is probably not the proper way to do this, but let's pop off our inlets. I do like that they both come off at once here. Nice. Minimal amount of water comes out of there, about three drops. I like that feature. But our filter, not a strong enough pump. It's not like a sump style pump, so it can't pump water out of it once the siphon is broken, once it doesn't have more water coming in. So what we're gonna do is attempt to open this bad mamma jamma up. There's our impeller. Essentially, it's a lot like a power head in that regard. Here's our intake, or inlet. This is where the water comes from the tank, and this also has a UV bulb in it. We are able to open this impeller and clean it. I don't think we have to right now. Let's get this guy out of the way. And try to pull out some trays here. Now, a common complaint of canister filters is that they are basically nitrate factories, but I mean, I would make the argument that so are hang off the back filters. And so is basically any filter that's not, you know, a heavily planted tank setup. Generally, their goal is to produce nitrates and water change them out. But this one on trays are stuck in the way. Oh, there we go. Okay. Tray one here. Well, tray three here. This is our biological media. This tray here. This is our chemical media. Lots of the uh, carbon residue is in this. I hate, honestly, chemical filtration. And I kind of plan on killing off this filter, this part of the filter anyway. But let's... Man, it is gridded up in there. get the bottom tray out and that's the mechanical one and that's the one we want to clean especially based off of uh, what came out of there it's actually doing pretty well that's pretty clean but it's the fine one that's probably got problems oh uh, yeah that's got a little bit on it we'll get that guy rinsed out that's got a little bit on it but you can see I mean it's still blue it's not like it's green or anything Let's try to get the tray out, shall we? Come on, tray. Why are you so in there? I don't want to break you. That sounds terrible. Let's not do that. Ah, there we go. Dump the rest of our particulate out of there. And we have a bucket full of condition tank water here so uh, 
convenient, right? Let's say that's pretty clean. Let's uh, make sure none of that. Gritty particulates still on this tray and Let's rinse this bucket one more time. If you didn't know, it is a concrete floor down here. So, not really super concerned about water. It mops up pretty nice. Okay. Filtration will now be mechanical, fine. Now we have mechanical coarse. Let's rinse this off too. This has a little bit of grime on it, just a tiny bit. But I would say it's still holding up really well. Drop that guy in there. Now this is what we're gonna change here. We have chemical, or excuse me, chemical, nah. Biological. Let's go get rid of this chemical, shall we? How do I get this cartridge up out of here? Let's go upside down. Oh, it pops right out. Perfect. Look at that. Oh, snap. More coarse filtration. Look at that. I like that. Let's rinse it. Remove that carbon particulate from there. Now we got a lot of coarse filtration in that one tray. This is a carbon cartridge, but it's kind of also a bit plugged up with biological media. I'm just not a fan. I wonder, can we, we could look to disassemble this, but I don't think we have to, because I think what we're gonna do, take the empty tray it was in, we're gonna do, we're gonna take half of this ceramic media here. Is that air pump getting noisy to you? Oh, it's touching that, okay. of this ceramic media. Now we got some bio balls in this tank underneath the ceramic media. We got some of the ceramic media in here. I don't know what on earth we've done with the box. Where is the box of media? The box of the same ceramic media. God, if I knew how much space I had, I'd buy two boxes. And we're gonna put some of the fresh media here. And I know it hasn't been rinsed yet. We're getting to that. We're gonna rinse it. Oh man. I really could do with some more media, but I think the siphon's easy enough to break, and we'll add more media to this uh, probably tomorrow. The beauty of these trays is I'm able to submerge them in this bucket of water, and drain them. Get a good rinse going. this up with some more ceramic media. Heck, in, let's
let's call it about now. I just, I'm not happy with this and we have a pet coat. And we're back with more filter media since we have more room. I also grabbed my bottle of uh, starter, you know, biological booster. Yeah, I mean, debatable how much that works, but we're kind of already doing that by having the old uh, biological media in here. But let's pull these trays back out because we're going to need to do more rinsing too. Let's pull these trays back out. And they're still damp, so this bacteria hasn't died in the last half hour. And this is basically Fluval's version of the same product. Bulk of this into here. And since this is going to be our top tray, let's throw some in that tray too. A couple pieces. Screw it. Since this is going to be our top tray, we want to make sure the lid closes. Sweet. Let's uh, go ahead and re-rinse this. Put a couple more pieces in here. Rinse it. And drop that guy right there. Boom. Making sure, of course, our inlets line up. That'd be a disaster, right? Actually, we probably wouldn't even be able to put the filter back together. A good rinse on that. Close that up. All we gotta do, put our tray on there. That keeps the filter media from, say, getting sucked up into our impeller, which, eh, now that I think about it, and now that we have it apart, why don't we just open it, check it, make sure it's clean. Shouldn't need a special tool, it's just got an arrow that says twist this way to open. Great. Ah, there we go. Now it's open. Pull this guy apart. Just a little bit of in there. Pull. Pull him out. Big magnet on there. Let's give it a little wipe down though. A little rinse. Just make sure it's nice and clean. Get him back in there. Oh, magnets in nicely. Put our, uh, get our little spindle lined up into the seal it's supposed to be in. Oh. And now he goes right here. Nice and closed up. Might as well throw it on for a half a second. Make sure it spins, right? That's always a good, good idea. It's nice and smooth. Perfect. Let's get this guy back together. Inlet with the UV light going down the slot. Lock it down. Then we're going to get our canister back in here. The beauty of this filter is we still have our in and our out still hooked up. All we got to do is quick release them down and there we are. And I don't know if you can hear this, but let's prime it now. Oh, there's some bubbles.
Ah, uh, listen to that siphon run. That siphon's pulling a lot of water through that line and through this filter. Once this filter fills up, oh, it's still running. Still not plugged in either. This is our cord. Cheer up, emo fishy. Cheer up. And the battery died, but as you saw, still not plugged in. One pump siphon, that was rad. Let's plug it in and check out this spray bar come to life. Oh. There we go. Starting to push a little out. Starting to pull a little more. Or, all right, it doesn't look like it, but it's completely running. That's because it's nice and quiet, but if we look across the surface of the water, you'll see that spray bar pushing. Well, unplanned video, chaotic video, but we got the filter put back together. It's got three times the biological media it had in it before. No muck in there. Should be running much smoother, much more room for beneficial bacteria to grow. We should have alleviated most of our problems by removing that waste and that breaking down of the material that was in there, be it old food that they didn't eat and went back into the filter, or be it poop. And now our emo fishies should be, you know, much happier in their, their environment. Now that they're not going to have all the nitrates and the nitrites, we've gone ahead and done a 50% water change. They're still pretending they're dead, just in different spots now than I'm here. Hey, hey, stop it, you're not dead. All right, I gotta move on to some more projects. So if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button and maybe share it with someone you think also is having some canister filter troubles. It's actually pretty common. <laughs> They tend to be nitrate factories, as is you know mentioned earlier in the video. If you want to see more content like this, you want to keep up the adventures of Bill and Ted here, or maybe the African cichlids, or Trogdor and Lillian and Pocket the Beardies, or you know Hiccup the Leopard Gecko, maybe even some of the tarantula stuff. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel, get that notification bell. You won't miss any of the future content. As always, I hope you're having fun with your pets, and we'll see you soon.